Hey guys, Mike Toy here with Bonsai Boise. So here is a willow leaf ficus that I bought uh, two or three years ago. As you can see, it's not doing great. So I repotted this about, about two years ago into this pot that it's in now. It's never really thrived. Um, it's, I think it had one little growth spurt. I trimmed it back once. This was a year ago and then it stayed like this. The entire time so my theory is that there's something going on in the soil so typically I wouldn't want to repot a tree when it's not thriving like right now but like this is but this is my Hail Mary shot so I'm gonna repot this tree and I'm gonna give you a couple of progression updates after I repotted it too and then as a bonus I'm gonna show you a method that I've been using to clean old pots and clean old tools. So stay tuned to the end for that. For now, let's get dirty. All right. This is a cutting that I took from this tree about a year ago. I call it my insurance cutting because now even if the main one dies, I still got this one. You can see the difference clearly in the color of the leaves. So the old leaves looking old and you know not healthy, the newer leaves on the newer cutting looking healthy. So in case there's any doubt as to whether or not it's doing well, this should more or less clear that up. I've noticed that these willow leaf ficus, at least this one and its cuttings um, they're really finicky. They're not fast growing like say a ficus benjamina or a tiger bark ficus. They're, they're just, they have these little growth spurts and then you trim it and then it gets shy for a long time, especially if it's in bad soil. So here's the new pot, same size, same style, even just cleaner. And we'll pull it out of here and let's see how the roots look. Not great. You now it could be that I used too much organics because I had a little, uh, I'm gonna call it a phase. I went through a, an organics phase where I thought, hey, organic matter is good for plants. I'm gonna put more of it in my bonsai soil. What, what could go wrong? It went wrong in almost every case. So I've since abandoned that phase. So I'm cleaning off all the old soil. It, it doesn't look good and healthy. It looks, you know, clumpy. And the roots, they're not dead. They would be a really dark brown if they're dead, but they're not growing either. They would have white tips and they would look healthier. So it looks kind of like the leaves. They're just sort of stagnant. They're just like they are. I'm not gonna trim them at all because it's already hanging on for dear life. And maybe that's too extreme. Maybe it's a little better than that, but it's not thriving. So I don't want to do anything that's going to hamper its growth. So uh, I'm going to try not to trim anything that I don't have to trim. I kind of like the slant of it, but I'm kind of weird. So here's the new pot. Gonna put a little drainage net there some fresh new soil. I get asked a lot about my soil mix. It's pretty much the same as Nigel Saunders. If you have, I'm sure you've seen his videos. If not, I've got a few videos out there on how I've made mine. It's mostly just perlite, pine bark, and absorb, safety absorb from an auto parts store. Occasionally some small volcanic rock when I can find it. But otherwise just that. So there it is in this new soil. I'm gonna be extra careful to work all the soil into the roots. My plan once I'm done here is I'm gonna put it outside on the patio, which gets partial sun at certain times of day, which is actually perfect. 
I don't want it. I don't want to put it in full sun where, you know, if it's not doing great, you don't want to put all that stress on it. If it's super healthy and vigorous, then yeah, full sun all day. But partial sun will be just right. It's been in the greenhouse, I should point out, um, up till this point. So I pulled it out of the greenhouse just for this. So there it is. Now the waiting game. You can see the difference in the soil. It just looks newer and better. I didn't trim a single leaf. I didn't trim a single root. I just got all that old soil out of there, put it in some new soil. A little closer look at it here. I will say, luckily, it hadn't been losing leaves up to this point. It hasn't been gaining or losing. It's kind of a weird uh, performance. <laughs> it just stayed the exact same for like a year or more. Fast forward three weeks, as it's partial sun. It did lose some leaves after I did this, but as you can see, there's the start of some new leaves. So. So far, so good. You can see the little green sprouts there. So it lost probably two thirds of its leaves, maybe three fourths, which had me worried. But then it started growing the new leaves. So, so that's a good sign. Fast forward a couple more weeks. And as you can see, those new leaves are coming in strong. So I'm very relieved by that. I think, I think everything is gonna be okay. Take a closer look here. This is the most action I've seen out of this tree since I bought it. I think I got it for $25 in 2019 or so. You can clearly see the difference in the leaves now. The old leaf, not just the size, but the color and I was a little tempted to lose all the old leaves, but I thought, no, things are going well. Let's not push our luck. So fast forward again here in a second. Fast forward two more weeks. And as you can see, doing much better. So this is about seven or so weeks after initially repotting it. So turns out Everything is going to be okay. She's a fierce killer. Don't let her cute little face fool you. She's a murder machine. <laughs> and here's the little bonus thing. I just wanted to share kind of what I found. It's a, I guess you'd call it a cream rock or a cream stone. If you've got old bonsai pots, and I'm sure you do, with yellow spots and calcium buildup, you just get one of these little blocks. Cream mate. And no, this is not an advertisement. They are not incentivizing me in any way. I just happened to buy one. So I just wanted to pass along because I'd been, you know, trying different methods and nothing really worked until this guy. I think the stone was like 20 bucks, maybe. As you can see, it works on tools as well. So I won't clean the entire pot for you here. I just wanted to scrub it for a second and kind of give you an idea of just how well it works and just how easy it is to do. Because I've tried everything, every product you can think of. Nothing really ever worked, especially once it dries. Once it dries, all the spots show back up, but not with this. As you can see there where I scrubbed, it's clean. I'll show you here on a rusty old tool. By the way, you can find these stones on Amazon. I found one on a bonsai website somewhere. You can find them pretty much anywhere. So scrub it up, dub, scrub it up, dub. And that's just water that I'm spraying on it. I'm not using anything special. So look at that, there's the rust on that side that I haven't scrubbed and there it is after I scrubbed it for like 30 seconds. Super easy. 
So needless to say, I went on a little scrubbing streak and I started <laughs> cleaning off every tool that I could find, every old pair of scissors and shears, got everything looking brand new again. If you've got any old scissors that you use for, you know, ficus in particular, that little sap from ficuses tends to build up on scissors after a while. That crane stone takes it off in no time. So anyways, again, not an advertisement for any particular outlet that sells those things. I just wanted to pass it along in case you've struggled like I have with ways to clean it. So now you got a way to do it. Super easy, super cheap. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good rest of your day.